Hey book friends, welcome to the channel. I have a super fun video for today. It's really inspired by this time of year. This time of year, I love to read. First off, it's probably my favorite time of the year to read, but it's also the time when I usually have a cup of tea, I usually have a blanket, I have the fire on, on my TV, you know what I'm talking about. It's fantastic. This time of year, I love it. It is all things cozy. So. That means I tend to gravitate towards books that make me cold, cold and snowy books. So just that setting where you just feel it kind of like deep in your bones, like everybody's huddled around the fireplace or they're trekking through the snow, anything that just gives you that just like chilly, chilly feeling. Those are the books I love. And so I decided to compile, to compile a bunch of books that have that cold and snowy setting to recommend to you today. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. Today's video is so fun. I just love this topic of cold and snowy reads. So I have a number of books. I have some fantasy books. I have some historical fiction books. I have some thriller books because those are really the type of books I read. But I'm going to start with some fantasy books and I'm going to start with some of my favorites from last year. So this is not a surprise if you have been watching my channel for a while. The Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. So good. So you have The Bear and the Nightingale, which is the first one, and then The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch, which these are the UK covers, and they're just pretty. So I love, love, love this series for so many reasons. It's very immersive. The main character of Vasya, she's just so strong-willed, and she doesn't really care what others think, but yet she is struggling with some stuff and like coming into her own and all of that is just fantastic. But the setting is great. It is like a historical fantasy type book. I'd say more fantasy than historical fiction, but the setting of the book is in Russia and it's in Russia, I'd say like medieval times, so 1600s, something like that, where you have a lot of the old traditions still very much alive in that culture where you're talking a lot of folklore and spirits. So like the house spirit stories or like the bigger stories like the frost demon, which plays a part in this story, which he's actually one of my favorite characters of this whole series. But what the first book in the series is really about is her kind of coming of age and coming into her powers. Her mother had gifts, abilities, and she seems to have inherited them and that makes her at odds with say like the orthodox christian church which was very much also a part of the russian culture at that time and so there's a lot of this like good versus evil gods versus demons sort of underlying tones in this book and it's it's just great it's such a good story i'd say the first half is a little bit more of a setup so if you're okay with a slow beginning it is so worth it. And then the books just keep getting better. Like The Winter of the Witch is my favorite of the trilogy, but I highly recommend picking up The Bear and the Nightingale if you have not picked it up. It has so many of those like cold elements where they're just really cold and there's not enough food for the winter and they're all huddled around like the stove and the fireplace and the snow just keeps drifting up against the door sort of ideas. It's so great, so great. The next fantasy book that has kind of wintry vibes, I just read like literally a week ago or something like that. I started it over Thanksgiving and I read it in two days. I couldn't put it down. It has been a while since I have picked up a book that I couldn't put down. So the book is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novak. I've actually been recommended this book by a number of people, probably because I like The Bear and the Nightingale so much because this is also set in Russia, but it is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling of sorts and I love the way the author did it. So it took this girl, her name is Miriam, and she is a money lender's daughter. And her dad is not the best money lender and so they're pretty poor and it pushes her to take over. So she takes over being the money lender, like the collector of debts. And in doing that, she becomes really good at it. And then somewhere along the lines, she kind of boasts that she can turn silver into gold. In other words, she's so good at what she's doing that she can really find ways to get more than what she had, if that makes sense. But the issue with this town is it is set right up against 
the winter forest and that is the setting of the winter king and a different set of people they're more like magical beings they have they're very strong they can withstand the cold and it's a realm that's not accessible to the humans on the other side so she starts to interact with them and they're called the stark she catches the eye of the stark king and he particularly likes gold so he likes his silver turned into gold and she has that knack and it kind of plays out from there it definitely has those cold vibes when she is in more of that wintry kingdom that everything is cold it's winter all the time but the story as a whole definitely has more of a I don't know what to call it of kind of like a savior vibe where she is involved in like saving her people sort of idea and I was all for it I was like totally sold out for her character I was really rooting for her and I just loved how it all played out so I really enjoyed this book and I recommend it for a chilly cold winter read okay so those are my fantasy books and I know there's more fantasy that have kind of a cold setting I would love some recommendations because I feel like I am being drawn more into fantasy lately so if you have any recommendations for good cold wintry fantasy books I would love them put those below but to transition to historical fiction so I have a number to share with you because I really do love the genre of historical fiction and the first one I want to point out that definitely has those chilly vibes is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. This book is about Agnes, yeah, Agnes, who was the last woman in Iceland to be sentenced to execution. And this story kind of unfolds a bit like a mystery, but it starts out with the fact that she has already been sentenced to execution and she has been moved to a remote farm in Iceland where she's just being kept as they bring in all the things they need for an execution. And then it follows her story. So this whole time you're wondering, did she really do what they said she did and how did that happen and what were the circumstances? And I just wondered the whole time, was she like wrongfully accused? What really happened? But what I loved about this book was it was so atmospheric. I just felt like I was a part of these just harsh winters where the people were just trying to make sure they had enough food for when they got snowed in and they couldn't go to the main town. They had to stay in their houses. And now this family has to take in this murderess, this person who supposedly murdered these two men. So good, so good. I highly recommend it. It's definitely an emotional read, but I feel like to me, it was more of an atmospheric read where you just really felt drawn in to that setting. Highly recommend it. Okay, next book, a Kristen Hanna book. So I couldn't decide whether I would recommend The Great Alone or The Nightingale as a book that had a cold atmosphere. And The Nightingale does, definitely. But I actually have a different book that is a World War II book that also deals with what some of the people were dealing with during those times and how cold it was. But I picked this Kristen Hanna book because this is truly a cold book. So this is The Great Alone. It is about this Vietnam vet who comes back from the war and he's just different. He's angry, he's very much like against the government and he wants to just go as far away from everybody as he can. So he takes his wife and his daughter and I believe when the story starts, she's more in the like preteens, maybe nine years old, something like that. And he takes them and he moves them to Alaska. And he not only wants them to homestead, but it's more of like an off grid sort of idea and they are not prepared and you feel it in her writing, especially that first winter. They have no skills for how to survive in the wilderness and they're pretty much on their own. There's a small community and actually I love that aspect of this book is how the community worked together to help them out, to teach them what they needed to do to live, to survive the winter, to not die in the Alaskan winter, in the dark, in the cold, in the snow fantastic and since it's a Kristen Hanna book you also know there's big emotions and so there's a lot of stuff going on within their family and some just real hardships there but it has some of the best atmosphere and some of the best scenery you just really feel isolated in the Alaskan wilderness when you read this book so it's so good it's a pretty big book but like any of her books I feel like I read it quickly because it just really tugged at my heartstrings where you're like oh my gosh everything that could go wrong is going wrong with these people so really really good book okay the next book I want to recommend is the one I was thinking of 
that has to do with World War II. So this is We Were the Lucky Ones. This is by Georgia Hunter. I really loved this book. It follows a Jewish family. The book starts off with just getting to know the characters, getting to know the family. So there's a mom and dad, and then there's the kids, and some of them are married, some of them are about to get married. So the kids are more in like 20s and 30s sort of idea, but they're all Jewish. And the book basically follows each of their stories. So there's definitely a multiple points of view and multiple storylines where it would take over this brother or that sister and how they are suffering in different ways due to the Nazis and due to the fact that they were Jewish. But I included this book because one of the brothers and his wife were sent to a Russian work camp and it just felt so cold. Some of the things they had to deal with and some of the things that happened just broke my heart first off, but also like it just felt so like unbelievable. Like you, you couldn't withstand those kinds of conditions and just so cold. So this is not like a fun cold book. This is definitely a tearjerker cold book, but it was a really well told story in my opinion, as it comes to World War II books. So I really, really like this one. Last historical fiction book that is cold is this book. And I'd probably say this is the coldest of them all. This is The Children's Blizzard by Melanie Benjamin. I actually have a reading vlog of this book on my channel. I'll link it above. This book was so interesting. It is about the Dakota territories, I think in the late 1800s, when weather would just move in really quickly in the winters and it would go from very mild to very poor conditions. And this book focuses on school children that are caught in a blizzard. And then it focuses on the school teachers, like what do they do? How do they help the kids? And I'd say the first like third of the book really focuses on the blizzard and it's intense. It is a very intense part of the book where you just really feel that cold and you just can't imagine what it would be like for these kids that are trying to figure out how to get home and what to do to survive. Oh my gosh, I feel like while reading that part, I was so cold. So that part was excellent. I didn't as much appreciate the second part of the book, but it was still good. I think I still gave it a three stars, but I feel like that first chunk, I really felt what it would have felt like to be in a blizzard like that. It's so cold. So I recommend this if you want a good chilly read in front of the fire. Okay, and then I have two more books and they're thriller books. And so the first one I'm gonna mention is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I don't have this book, I actually got it from the library. It was another book that I just read in like two sittings almost. It's such a fast book and it's such an intense book. I really liked it. There was definitely a little bit of goriness to it that I wasn't prepared for, but the storyline was really good. So it has to do with this woman. She's in college, I think, and she was driving over a pass to get home from college and she was getting snowed in and she had this like old beater car and her cell phone battery was dying and she made it to a rest stop at pretty much the top of the pass and she couldn't get any further. And so she stopped in there to like try and get cell service and all these things and they were pretty much stuck. They couldn't go any further and the radio was saying that like, they had to wait for the plows that will come in the morning sort of idea. So she's at this rest area with a number of different people. This is a thriller book so I won't say too much more other than she goes out to her car at one point and then walks by a van and she notices that there's a small child in there. And then she realizes that one of the other people at the rest stop is a kidnapper but she doesn't know who. And it's so good because it's a blizzard. So it's cold, they're stuck, it's scary. So it's just such a good book. I highly recommend it. It's also a very fast book. If you're just really wanting an entertaining read, I highly recommend No Exit. The last thriller book I have that I recently read was One by One by Ruth Ware. So I liked this book. I feel like it is similar in plotline to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, and I liked And Then There Were None better. But I did appreciate this book. I was invested in the story. I wanted to know who the killer was, because basically this has to do with a group of people. It's actually a work group of people, like a tech company that go to this isolated chalet, and they're like gonna do some skiing and just enjoy the scenery. and. Then things start going wrong and people start dying one by one and you have to figure out who did it. And I was entertained because I was kept trying to figure out who did it and I didn't know who it was. And again, in this story, it's 
super cold in the sense that there's this gigantic avalanche that comes down the mountain and it wrecks part of their house, but it definitely takes out the power, it takes out communication, and then they're stuck in a house where somebody's killing everybody kind of one by one. So it's really good. I liked it. It definitely had those like cozy up by the fire sort of vibes as well. So anyway, those are my recommendations. And if you also love cold and snowy books this time of year, let me know down below and give me any recommendations you have because every winter about this time, I'm always looking to pick up some new ones. I have some on my list. I'll put them up here. I've been wanting to read I think it's called Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis. The Arctic Fury, that looks really good, I think. And then um, also Murder on the Orient Express. That sounds really good. That's another Agatha Christie book. And also Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. I like Kristen Hanna, and that's supposed to be her most wintry book. So those are my books that I'm kind of potentially thinking about reading, but I would love other recommendations by you guys. Let me know what you think. And otherwise, that's what I have for this video. If you liked it, if you liked my suggestions, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all the things. But otherwise, I will see you in the next book video. All right, guys, take care. Bye.